attending the webinar. And I hope you can take part because this is what is amazing about joining a live webinar. The fact that you can interact, ask questions, and I think this is going to be cool. So I've got my eyes here on the chat and please keep uh, typing and interacting, okay? Very well. Uh, we've got many people here, I'm so glad. And uh, we're going to use this time so I can share with you a feasible possibility of the use of artificial intelligence for the EFL students' uh, speech recognition. Uh, the first thing when we talk about artificial intelligence that comes to mind is that it's something really far away from our teaching reality when you think of regular classrooms, our country, the states here in Brazil. Everybody thinks, ah, but come on, this is science. This is really far away from our current reality. So one of the reasons that took me into this specific field of research is to get to understand what is it in terms of artificial intelligence that is really developing and what it is in terms of artificial intelligence that we teachers can make use of, which is actually the second case then. EFL is English as a foreign language, but we also have the context of ELT, which is English language teaching. In both contexts in our country, considering that our mother tongue is Portuguese, we have lots of challenge and our students face those challenges daily, every level, every lesson, and so do we. When it comes to speech recognition, just before I get started, I'm going to make uh, this thing very clear. So what it is in terms of uh, English, may that be ELT or EFL, and also the fields of artificial intelligence. Then I'm going to move on to a research, a more contemporary research, and people who inspire me when I consider this field of technology. And halfway through the session, I'm going to invite you, the audience, to give it a try to join using your mobile phones. That's our very important uh, thing here. Well, just move something around here. Great. Let me contextualize the work I do. I've been an English teacher for 25 years overall. I, I have taught in regular schools, language schools, children, teenagers, adults, mixed ability groups, business, exam preparation, and scenarios with many students, no technology at all, no internet, which we can relate as teachers, we can relate. It's not paradise, it's not, wow, perfect conditions, and that's the reason why this can be done. Uh, the key point of my work over the years is mobile technology for collaboration and English language development, again, through collaboration. Mobile learning, because that's the easiest thing to guarantee that at least some students have in class. And collaboration, because that's how we grow as people and as students, and that's how we can help each other. And I teach English to Portuguese native speakers. Uh, this was really important when I presented uh, this talk at IATEFO, considering the international audience. Something that uh, I'd like to share with you that I think you can see is this quote by Robin Walker, that accent is a natural, inevitable and significant outcome of language variation. But this cannot be at the expense of intelligibility. So the key point of my research and the reason why I developed this project and I shared it with my students is because, of course, we are, I am a Brazilian speaker of English, 
So, of course, we have accents when we are not native speakers. But the key point that we must teach our students is the intelligibility, because that's going to make a difference uh, in, in the way that we develop as a learner, because they're going to sit for job interviews or for exams, and it's something really important. Well, let's uh, use some time to get to understand the concept of artificial intelligence. At first, people usually think uh, in terms of robots and androids and something that may even replace teachers. And I, I don't see it that way, especially because as I have been teaching for a long time, uh, and I have seen lots of things in, in this uh, time I've been teaching, and we teachers are crucial in this process. But a very important fact is that technology cannot be ignored. I think it worked if you believe like late 90s and the beginning of 2000s, it was like we could even have an option. But currently, and of course, in the years to come, it's not something that we can count on. So my work is to make sure things are shared and that we teachers help each other and get to understand uh, ways to help us use technology to make our lives easier and to make our students' learning more productive. The definition of artificial intelligence, as you can see, is the theory and development of computer systems, so think in terms of uh, the very root of the meaning, to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence. And that's a very important point such as the visual perception, speech recognition, that's our key and central point for the session, decision-making, and translation between languages. Uh, I can see here the hellos. Hi, guys, in the comments. I'm following here. Thank you very much for being here and following. The thing is, there is artificial intelligence which responds similar to human intelligence. So for instance, when you say, hello, Google, and you ask, and the artificial intelligence responds right away, a question that you ask, this is human-like intelligence performance. And this is definitely something which can be used. In this part here, of speech recognition. This is the, another field which was the, maybe the intro field of artificial intelligence, which is known as machine learning. So it's something that it's not really judging, such as a person reasoning with another, but it is responding according to what you are asking to be performed. It seems a bit weird, but we are getting there. There is this uh, Bernard Moore. He studies a lot technology in general, and he's very active, especially on LinkedIn, and he's a lecturer. And lots of things in terms of his writings and very current writing, like last year and this year, point towards this direction of a more current use of the concept of artificial intelligence. Something else I'm going to tell you is that in a few minutes by the end of the presentation, I'm going to share a link with everything and the references so you can, you can access preferably on your mobile, <laughs> right? So there's going to be a digital handout pretty soon. Uh, I'd like to have here uh, to share something with you, which is my blog. Let me see here. I believe maybe some of you already follow, but I'm going to leave this address here at first. 
Let me see. I'm also learning things here. <laughs> okay, so this is my Instagram. And why am I sharing this? Because as a teacher, I share my classroom practice on a daily basis, every two days, weekly, from what happens in a real class. So I think it's up there. If you click, you're going to be directed to the Instagram account. Hi, I can see more people joining. Can you just uh, reply if you're able to access this link I've just shared, so just so I know? Not yet? Okay. Let me try. Okay, I'm also going to share here in the chat so we can have it both ways. And lesson number one about using technology. How do you ever do things run smoothly? So I had this plan. Okay, let me share the Instagram using this action button here so it's easier for you to see. But we have to be ready when things do not work for everybody. So my plan, like I had to come up with another suggestion, so I shared here in the chat, so you have it both ways. Uh, this is also a great opportunity to talk about the different operational systems. So there's Android and there's iOS, basically. And there are a few things here and there. And do not give up just because at first something doesn't work. Uh, this is a very important message. I don't know how long you have been using technology. Maybe you could uh, type uh, something about it if you are like tech savvy, you really like using technology in class, or if you're just getting started, or, you know, if you could write a little bit, this can give me evidence, so I move on. And it's very important that you consider this. Maybe the first attempt is not perfect, but also the phone needs some time to adjust to a new app or to a new system. Well, I'm going to share here with you a case study uh, that involves the use of uh, Google Docs. Google Docs is like Microsoft Word, is the simplest uh, app and to use. Uh, if you know my work, if you know me, uh, you know I have a history of loving Google Docs because it's simple to the point and there are many possibilities. The most famous possibility of using Google Docs is for collaboration. Remember when many people, uh, very well, thank you, I can see the replies here. But uh, if you could please uh, just say a little bit about what you use in terms of technology, how confident you feel, or maybe if you're just learning, if you feel suspicious, just give me some um, background here. I'd like to see that. Thank you. So I keep my eye here. This is amazing about webinars because when we watch, uh, there is this possibility of interaction. Very well. So Google Docs, can be accessed by Drive. I think basically everybody has a Gmail. So when you have a Gmail, you can access the Drive. And then Docs is one of these apps. But I'm talking about working with Google Docs on a more challenging but fantastic environment, which is mobile. So I'd like, uh, while I explain a few things here, I'd like you to make sure you've got this app. So this, the app is Drive. Then I'm going to share something with you here. It's a free app. And then let me share my screen with you so you can see what I intend to show. Okay. OK, 
Can you see that? This is the icon of Google Drive. Okay, I think it's still loading a little bit. And uh, something I can do, I can also share the link. Maybe it's even easier. I'm reading here the comments. Thank you very much. Let me go back to the presentation. Then if you have Google Drive, Lovely, I'm, I'm reading your contexts here. There is also the other app you need, which is Google Docs. I'm going to share and teach regarding the voice typing feature, or in Portuguese, digitação por voz. And this is the symbol here. So the idea of my project was to have students talk to the phone and have the artificial intelligence of the app distinguish if that speech made sense, and then we have the transcription, or if there are some sounds and some interference that need to be corrected. But the project took me a little bit forward and I'm going to show you that soon. Keep typing, please. I'm reading the comments here. It's important uh, to see how to go. The students receive the transcription of their speech and can check the intelligibility of pronunciation. There's another element here. There is moment to expand on learner independence. Especially when we teach groups of students, the part where we are monitoring them, you know, uh, we will focus our, our attention and then we take turns till we can actually get to monitor everybody. But there are things students can do on their own and this is so productive as well. Uh, this age of experiences is also a term used by Bernard more if you research uh, his very, very uh, up to date when it comes to technology in general. And this age of experience is a concept that is interesting to understand. Everything with technology thus far has been moderated on some screen, and then it's how it is that we can use the phone screen to our advantage to teach. Considering that many students use phones for entertainment and for having fun and social media and they are kind of ninjas when it comes to that. But when we think of study, I've heard over the years that oh, I didn't know we could do that. So keep this in mind. We are learning together. Uh, maybe it can be the big screen or the mobile screen. Well, we, uh, the tools are here. Mobile phone, Google Docs app, which I believe you have on your phone at this point, and the voice recognition feature. So we have this voice type feature, uh, voice typing possibility. Speech recognition the ability of the computer to identify and respond to the sounds produced in human speech. So that's the area of artificial intelligence I'm using, something that is ready, and I'm just applying that to teach. When we think of speech, there's the articulation, uh, this, the, the sounds that we make using our mouth, lips, tongue. There's the voice, so it, it involves the vocal folds and the breath to actually make the sounds. 
and the fluency, which is the rhythm of our speech. Combine those three and we have or not <laughs> intelligibility. Our students tend to get more impressed when it comes to fluency. Your teachers, you know, they want to be fluent. But we know that in order to get there, there's a process that also involves the other parts. Uh, so the idea is, when the student speaks, the phone recognizes the pronunciation and there is this transcription. If pronunciation is okay, cool. If pronunciation is not, then the student knows, mm, I have to work on the pronunciation of this and that word. This is the first principle. So I'm going to start by showing one of the videos I separated. All those videos are simple. They are classroom footage. So I recorded on my own and they are very simple videos. The whole point is so that you can see how it works in a real classroom environment, okay? I see here, yes, some comments. Some I, I like that you're mentioning some things in terms of the apps you use. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if you could also, and this is a teacher-to-teacher favor you are watching me here and i'm going to get the videos like uh, 20 seconds uh, if you can go on facebook dissolve facebook page and like this event and share this event i would appreciate that okay well let me go to the videos then this is our first video uh pay attention to what is going on Twenty percent engage with the site daily, and 45% do so several times a day. A significant increase from the 15%. In this first video, let me go back to the presentation for a while. In this first video, you see the principle of the work, which is he's speaking and the phone is having this transcription of his speech. Uh, I worked with groups of students I had. I had an average of 15 to 19, 20 students. And in the first phase of the project, I was really worried uh, whether I would keep them all together in, in the room or not. So in the first moment, I actually took them to the hall that's what you can see on the background is the hall. And each student was a bit far away from each other. There were two reasons for that. The first, of course, so that they could have this isolation and so the sound could be intelligible to the machine. But there was also because they feel sometimes self-conscious of speaking, of using something new in front of the colleagues, okay? So this is one video. Let me show you another. And by the way, every time we propose something new to students, the first thing you have to do is to actually share the purpose with them. Uh, so sometimes teachers come to me and say, Raquel, I used it and it didn't really work. So the steps I have been taking so far, they involve talking to the student and say, look, I've got these ideas here and this purpose. What do you think? Give your students the possibility to get to understand the reasoning. Mostly when they do, it makes sense. I'm going to show you another speech, okay? Just hold on, please. I'm getting the link. As you can see, the videos are simple because it's like this is happening and wow, I can film it. 
I'm also careful not to film the students. If you follow my Instagram stories and even the feed, but especially the stories where the action happens, you realize I never expose the students. So really important because otherwise they will feel, uh, you know, it's not going to work properly. Very well. I just need here, maybe I close this video. I'm having a technicality here, guys. Just hold on. I think now it's okay. It's going to work. Freedom expresses itself in the season. Decision. The word decision, like the word. You see, uh, let me play just one more time. Freedom expresses itself in decision. Decision. The word the decision, 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 like the word, like the word decision. decision. I see that there's some sound difficulty. Okay, let me see. Thank you. It's important that we keep this up very well. So in this second video, again, they are still learning English and they are working through intonation, pronunciation, the new resource. Now I'm going to interrupt the videos to actually go to this crucial part, which is how to go through so that your students' phones and your phones can actually respond to this. Otherwise, it is frustrating. So now, uh, I think you've got your phones at hand. Uh, it's important that we follow this step by step together. All right? You ready? So please get your phones. The first step I need from you is that you go to your settings. This is where it is in my phone. So you go to your settings and then from the settings, when you click, that at some point there's going to be general management. I suppose that such as myself, you usually have your phones programmed for both Portuguese and English. And it's really cool, we can even choose the accent British, American, English, and there are all the possibilities as well. When you go to general management, and it's pretty much the same in iPhone as well, maybe the order will change a little bit. There comes language, language and input. When you click in language and input, you've got the language that you have pre-selected for your phone. But if you go down here, there's something called text to speech output. It's like we have to prepare the system to be using to get to understand what we want. Uh, I usually click Google text to speech. That's the one to choose, especially because it's Google Docs. And then you choose the language. Uh, there are many possibilities, but if you have previously chosen English as one of your languages, that's going to be possible. Remember, when we open a document, let me open one here just so we can follow. The first thing that becomes active is the keyboard. And then it's important to have this keyboard 
in English, so it will understand that text to speech is in English as well. Now let's take a look at this Google Docs app. So I've got here this blank page in my phone. And if I click anywhere, I'm going to have the keyboard coming up. Features of Google Docs. If we consider Google Docs, in terms of desktop view, it's very easy to see. Remember, there's the file, etc. And then there's voice typing, which is a small icon with microphone. Like we can see in this highlight of the, the picture here. This microphone is key for desktop, but what about the mobile phone? This microphone will actually be in the keyboard. So I'd like to invite you to see that. Go to your Google Drive app here. When you go to Google Drive, you open your drive, there are your folders and everything. At some point, you are going to find a plus. When you click there, there will be some colors representing the different apps and then you choose the blue one. The blue one is going to open a blank dock. And if you touch it, the screen any at any point, there comes the keyboard you are going to find your microphone there, but maybe not. And this is something when we are dealing with the students' devices, there's such a variety. And I'm teaching here, but there's no guarantee. Everybody has exactly the same process. So at some point, there are people when they get the keyboard, they don't see any microphone at all. But, if you don't, try going to the settings button up here or, sorry, up or down the keyboard. Sometimes just clicking on the settings icon for a longer while will give you some options and among them the microphone. This is important to get to understand because otherwise we have an expectation and it doesn't work. Let's see a little bit more in terms of recording, okay? Just before uh, I play this recording, uh, you can see this is the third recording I'm playing. And mostly students have simple phones, not the latest model, and sometimes not working properly. We've got all sorts of things. Do not be scared because uh, I'm not going to be able to handle that. Students are incredibly collaborative uh, when they understand we are using something that's going to help them move forward somehow. Also, consider the point that there is a learning curve for everything you do. So the first attempt may be a bit um, wonky, not exactly what you want, but chances are the second and third attempt are going to be better. And on the subject of number of attempts, if you use something in terms of technology, once in a blue moon, this is not going to help our students at all. Every piece of technology you use needs to be steady so they learn how to use, remember what I was teaching here, the mechanics, where is it that you click? What is it that you download? Where exactly do I find this place to click here and there? And there is also, of course, the purpose. 
So it's important that you choose a few tools to have, but that those tools are part of your course. I'm not saying every day, but something that the students understand, wow, this is integrated. Uh, I mean, you're talking about the video or is it still the... Is it still the volume not good? I see a message here, there's a concern. I'm going to play another video now. And in this video, uh, you are going to see the same in a second phase. Uh, I haven't played the video just yet. You mean my video where I'm speaking or the video because I'm going to play the video, I haven't played just yet. Let me just, by the way, go here. I would like to go, let's see here. Okay. Let me see. I'm going through YouTube to get the videos, okay? I know and I'm very aware of the fact that, let me see, I'm getting the link here. The videos are really simple, but these videos, they reflect the real classroom action, what really happens, there's no makeup there. Let me see here, I'm having a difficulty with a video here because, let's see, um, let me get the link. And then what we use in real class, I'm showing you just like a scene of one student using, but this is happening at the same time. I'm just going around the class and people are doing that at the same time. I'm just trying to figure out here how to go with the link. I'll be also, uh, remember I told you there's going to be a link regarding uh, the references of the session as well. Okay. So, every time we use technology, it happens a little bit here and there. And I'm squinting here because <laughs> it's going to work. Thanks for your patience, by the way. All right, let's see if the sound is better this time. I'm going, I, I may repeat the video or send you the links to the video so you can watch on your own. Do you think it helps? Yeah, because I, I'm trying to have it a bit louder. Let's see how it goes. Would you preserve, Would you preserve the tendencies of a poem? I think you can hear the background noise, yeah? It's a, it's a school. Let's go again. Well, we, we got to understand, just to recap so far, we got to understand what it is so the students speak and there is a recognition. So it means they are not speaking something they want, they're speaking a given text. Because otherwise they would say whatever and the phone would make sense of it or even not. Okay. And uh, so I'm reading here, yes, the other one before, the other video, right? Okay. So, of course, the student is reading a pre-selected paragraph which relates to something studied in class. 
so here, when you have intermediate students, it's something from either the book or from an article they read. If I'm talking about elementary learners, very elementary learners, so quick dialogues, so it all depends on the level of your student. As I was using the videos uh, during the classes, the first attempt, they were just getting used. Okay, teachers, so I clicked in the settings and they do the test driving and they see how it works. But then in the second attempt, things got better because they actually got to figure it out that if they keep the devices very close to their mouths while speaking, we could still be in class and not in the hall. So this was something we figured out by using. So the two options remain. If you want your students to feel more comfortable, like if they feel self-conscious, maybe you take them to the hall and they keep a little bit away from the colleagues. Or if you feel that everybody's okay, they keep quiet and speaking in a lower pitch voice, and that works as well. Maybe if not all the students have the device, then you can share. And now I'm going to show you something. Let me just get here. I'll send the link. Sure, I'm reading here. Let me open another file for us. I'd like to see if I can share this file with you. I'm going to make this attempt, okay? Let's see if this works. Okay, uh, can you see a white screen? Okay. Hello. How are you today? There seems to be a delay, but it will come. It will happen, yeah? Ah, of course, I opened the wrong file. Check this out. <laughs> it's one and I opened the other, okay? Hold on. Let's go again. Hello? Hello. Okay, so now we can see, this was just a simple demonstration. So what I did is I opened the file and remember I told you about the keyboard. So now I'm going back to you, hold on. Uh, all right, I'm back to you. Remember I told you about the white canvas? And then when you click there, there comes the keyboard. So I clicked on the microphone so I could speak. When you speak in the microphone, it's important that your keyboard is in English. Otherwise, you're going to have a weird understanding, okay, of what is going on. So let me go back to the file. What I'm doing here is just a simple sample, let me just find it, of what 
it happens with the students when they are speaking, okay? Good evening, everyone. So I'm speaking here. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's quite dangerous because it keeps, you see, typing everything I say. And but this is how students get to test. I'd like to invite you now to test this possibility. What do you say? There? Somebody said it worked. So I'd like to invite you now to play a little bit with your phone and say how it goes. <laughs> okay, it's working. More people are saying that. You see, this is the moment when we are learning how to handle the device and how it works. The same happens with our students. So do not expect them to go through an amazing task completion before they get to understand how it goes. So of course, start with hello, good morning, whatever. And then you're going to realize some students forget to shift the keyboard to English, so they speak in English, and oh, thank you very much for testing, oh, thank you very much, I'm so happy, this interaction is amazing, and so this is the moment when students test and see, ah, oh, it works, okay, okay, then there comes the task, remember what I told you, uh, if it's an intermediate student or advanced learner, you can use an article that you previously shared and then ask the students to copy one paragraph, usually a challenging one, and then paste that paragraph into the document. And then they go a little bit further and start speaking to get to see if the phone understands the speech or not. Then you say, but Raquel, how are they going to do that? What, what I ask them is the same I did here. I ask them to open Google Drive. Remember, I, I walked you through it. Click in the plus, open a, bl a blank document, a white document, and go. This is really interesting. It's a simple thing to do. It is machine learning possibility. And it can help in many ways. As the project went along, I realized I could expand even more. Remember what I mentioned at first? Learner independence. They realized that at some specific points, the pronunciation was not intelligible enough. That's the purpose, right? Teacher, the phone can't get to understand whatever sound, whatever word, sentence. And that's when I directed them to a, an online dictionary. There are many possibilities. Let me share one with you that is part of my daily routine teaching. Um, it is Cambridge Dictionary. I do not ask them to actually download any app. They can open this dictionary dictionary online. So if you type Cambridge Dictionary, uh, it's going to give us the possibility. Let, let's just type this word, okay? And there comes a powerful tool and very mobile friendly, the pronunciation. House. House. Or let's get a more challenging one. Letter. Letter. So students could, ah, so if I don't get to pronounce the word correctly if the system doesn't get to understand 
So they would go to a dictionary on their own, double check the pronunciation, American or British English, and carry on, as you can see in the first picture here. Well, to wrap up the session, practice makes perfection, really. So you have to go on and carry on. I carried feedback after using this along a level. And this is what my students uh, mostly said, if I consider the words. So the adults, there is this word cloud. And the words that are highlighted because they were mostly mentioned by students were skills, right, tool, improve, improve again. And for the teenagers, speaking, improve again, speech, among the others that you can see. Students' perception of learning and progress is really important. It is not easy when we propose something new. We have to walk people through something and have the understanding and the good sense that the first attempts are not going to be perfect, but they are going to be really meaningful and make a difference. By the second and third times I was using that, there were no instructions at all just the task and it's amazing to see those teenagers having classes at five in the afternoon you know getting to know how to do it and even the adults do technicalities happen yes they do and there are ways around it remember the keyword collaboration so they would help each other okay i speak a little bit then you speak the other little bit and so on i have a quick a uh, checklist for us here uh, involving everything I mentioned. So the first point, explain the learning goal. Everything you do, the student needs to understand. What's the point? What's the purpose here? Demonstrate. Even if it seems a bit, oh, it might be repetitive, huh? just do that. See how it goes. Step-by-step step of language setting configuration. It's important to go around this. Keep a certain distance from each other, but remember, it's also possible to have everybody in the same room and speaking closer to the microphone. Dictionary for pronunciation checking. So it's great. I suggested one, but you can choose the possibility you want, the possibility your students want and encourage students to share their learnings from using the tool. Afterwards, I would have them together and say, uh, with the, the basic learner sentences, so they could say true, false, it was difficult, it was simple, I liked, I don't like. And with the intermediate onwards, they were actually able to share a little bit of how they felt. Uh, and it, this is also part of the process, okay? Uh, what are the findings? It turned out that uh, the students, when they were preparing their speeches for a speaking competition we have at school, they were also using this as a tool for the intelligibility of their speech so that, oh, okay, I have to change it a little bit here, a little bit there. This is a tool, okay, uh, such as tool, it goes according to the usage that we make out of it. We teachers are essential in the learning process. I'm going to share uh, the dictionary was required. Let me, I'll share here in the comments, okay? Thank you. I will, uh, actually, I'm going to share something with you right now, which is a digital handout. You're going to have here this I have like four minutes, I have to make the best out of it, okay? Just before I share this link, when I consider uh, artificial intelligence, do not be afraid of it. Uh, it is also part of teaching, and there are tools we can use. So it's not distant from us classroom teachers. I believe the education has been transformed 
and will even more be profoundly transformed by artificial intelligence in terms of tools, ways of learning, and access to knowledge, to mention a few. My goals, I will keep on studying this development. Uh, I will also focus on the accessibility feature, special educational needs. This is uh, something that is very dear to my work, and I see lots of possibilities in this field for inclusion. And demystify the artificial intelligence, intelligence for our classroom usage. Uh, this is the bibliography, the reference bibliography, but you don't have to copy or to take photos. Can you see a code down here, bit.ly? So if you type this on your phones, and I'm saying on your phone so that you can have your students experience of using, I have just typed that. This will take you to a handout where you have everything I've just shared. And there, there are two more things I, I really need to share with you, okay? So let me click here. Hold on. Okay. Let me open this. Can you see that? It is written in red, artificial intelligence for the EFL speech recognition. Not yet. Okay, I'll try again. To, but if you have followed the link, chances are, ah, yeah, some people, you got it, yeah? I'm trying here to share, but if I can't, just follow this link, you're going to have like everything. But let me try again. Is it showing now? Artificial intelligence in red? Not yet. So I think you have, you actually have to follow this link. Could you just let me know yeah, now it's okay? All right, so it was taking just some time. I'm just going back uh, because I would like to share two cool things with you before we go. Lovely, thank you. You see collaboration going on. Thanks, Jacqueline, for sharing. So you've got there all the material I used in research, uh, the videos, and there is going to be a session. I will be, I'll, I'll actually deliver this training uh, live in Dizal Higienopolis on the 27th. So if you get to go to Dizal website, could anyone please um, Google these Dizal Eventus and share the links? I would appreciate that. So on the 27th, I'll be there in Dizal, in Dizal Higienopolis and we are going to work face to face. Uh, I appreciate it if somebody can share this. And a last thing I would like to mention, uh, I'm co-author of the Evil series, so here's the book. And uh, my participation in the series, this is the latest Cambridge University Press release in terms of course book, and uh, I, my collaboration was in terms of using mobile learning. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to see, but I'll try, okay? There's an icon here that will appear, this icon with a mobile phone. I think you can see that. Yeah? And it says speaking, and there's like a mini phone there. So all the mobile learning elements and, and some comments for teachers were my contributions. And this is way like a, a book where it makes the, this integration of using technology, even if we are not tech savvy, it makes this thing very easy. So I'm going to send 
a link here to the project. And I'm also going to share with you, thank you, uh, the link to an interview where I talk about uh, my teaching career and when I started, because I used to be really scared of technology. I used to like hide and I was really insecure in terms of using technology. So I talk about my teaching uh, path from a person who was really scared to a person who is mostly curious now. Uh, I believe this is already available because it has been uh, launched in Brazil in July, all the series. Uh, the interview on YouTube, if you want to watch, because that's the written interview what I'm sharing. And the last thing is there's this video interview. And if you can uh, watch and see and spread the word. So uh, I appreciate it if you like, if you can share. This is so important so that it can reach all the people. So if you know of teachers who could benefit from attending the session in Gisal Higienopolis, uh, you know, direct them because, ah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, yes, I can share here, Gisal Evento. So there is a huge calendar with amazing possibilities of learning. And uh, yeah, the whole point. And uh, uh, yeah, we, yeah, I know there is this difficulty and that's why, you know, we, we just try via webinars. And if you can follow my stories, I'm sharing every day, classroom sites, teaching sites, difficulties, high points, low points, and information about possibilities for us teachers. The last thing, I'm sorry, I, say, I think I have said last thing like twice before, I'm social media manager of the Learning Technology Group of IATEFO. And uh, the next pre-conference event from Learning Technologies is exactly about artificial intelligence, but many other possibilities. So I'm sharing here the post. You can also follow us on social media. Thank you very much for your attention, especially for your participation. That was amazing, guys. Thank you very much.